Martin starts right now. Man accused of physically abusing and torturing a five-year-old child back in court today. It's day five of Jose Ruiz's trial, and today the defense started their case. Ruiz is charged with causing the death of five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya. Eric Hernandez is now joining us live outside the courtroom. So, Erica, the defense finally got a chance to put on their case. What have we seen so far from them? David, Tiffany, it's been somewhat of a disorganized start for the defense. They had several witnesses that they were planning to call up. Nobody kind of knew where they were at or in what order. But the first witness that they did call was a recalled witness, a CPS investigator who was called earlier in the trial, went back on the stand. The defense asked about prior investigations done on Katrina Mendoza, Mercedes's mom. But the investigator couldn't specifically answer those questions because they were only on the case after Mercedes had died. It was noted that there were more than 6,000 pages of documents on Mendoza from CPS, but again, the investigator couldn't answer on those documents because he was never a part of the case beforehand. Next, we heard from the medical examiner who did the autopsy in Mer on Mercedes in February 2022. He appeared over Zoom and he is no longer in Bear County, he said the same as Dr. Kimberly Molina last week. And finally, Katrina Mendoza, Mercedes's mom, was recalled to the stand uh, as well. Again, nothing really big coming out of this testimony. It's kind of unsure which what direction uh, the defense is kind of going right now. David Tiffany, they do have one more witness that will be called up at one o'clock, which was Mercedes's pe uh, pediatrician. And, and then we'll see kind of what happens next. David Tiffany. So, Erica, any idea when the jury might get this case and start deliberating? Yeah, Judge Boyd has said that they would be getting the case today. Right now, they are during the lunch break working on the charge of the court. So it appears that this afternoon at some point, we will have a verdict from the jury. And that could, if it's you know not guilty, he gets, he gets off. But if he is guilty, he is facing up to life in prison. David, Tiffany? Thank you, Erica. We'll continue to follow that story on KSAT.com. Now, a man charged with the 2020 stabbing death of a barbershop employee was sentenced to more than four decades in prison today as part of a deal in which he pleaded guilty to the murder and two other aggravated assaults. Damian Campbell entered the Diesel Barbershop on Bandera Road in May 2020 looking to make a future appointment. But as 20-year-old Haley J. O'Regan and other employees tried to help Campbell, he attacked them. Two employees escaped, but O'Regan was killed. Her family spoke directly to Campbell at the sentencing, as did one of the survivors who was wounded in the attack. Do you understand what you did? We know the amount of drugs or alcohol will make it go away because this pain is so front and center. Campbell was given 42 years for the murder and 20 years for each of the aggravated assaults. The sentences will be served concurrently, though the judge gave Campbell credit for the time he has already spent at the Bear County Jail. Let's get outside with live cam. A lot of clouds, have some rain over the weekend. Looks like the sun might be trying to peek through here and there, but is there any more rain in our future, Justin? We may see a few showers today. Nothing that's going to be very heavy or really interrupt your plans, but we have seen a little bit on the radar, and we're going to have another chance coming up Wednesday night into Thursday. Let's get right to the radar, and I'll show you where the rain is at this shower. And you see some kind of skirting San Antonio there. Look, this is going to be nothing more than some sprinkles. I think the air is pretty dry at the surface, so a lot of this is evaporating before it even hits the ground. But we are seeing some returns, especially on the southeast side. And likely some of this is reaching the ground around Sabinal, and this will work its way up towards Hondo. Pierce all seen a little bit of rain. And we've actually seen a few thunderstorms back out to the uh, west as some of this activity continues to uh, feed in from the south and west around Eagle Pass. But right now, most of it's just uh, pretty light. We'll keep in a small chance for showers today. We've also seen quite a bit of cloud cover, and that's going to keep temperatures in check today. 62 at the airport right now. 50s increase of springs underneath some of that thicker cloud cover. 58 Uvalde, 60 right now in Del Rio and around San Antonio. We're in the low to mid 60s. Uh, when it comes to our forecast today, probably mid 60s at best. The average high is 75. But today's high only around 66, so we are well below average this afternoon. And it will be that way again tomorrow before we see a warm-up. And, yes, we do have some more rain chances on the way, too. More on that coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. 
forward to that. Thank you, Justin. A family's disagreement has become a criminal case. San Antonio police say an argument has ended with the shooting of one man. It happened earlier today near Judson Road in Nacogdoches. According to police, a man was involved in an altercation with a woman he was in a relationship with when a younger man who also lives in the house stepped in. And that's when police say there was a struggle between the two men and a gun went off. The older man was shot in the upper body. The man shot was taken to the hospital by ambulance where he's expected to recover. A family continues to hold out hope that someone will come forward with information that could help police find their daughter's killer. Last weekend, someone shot and killed 21 year old Desiree Rivera at a party on the southwest side. The party happened on Old Pearsall Road at what the Bear County Sheriff's Department is calling an illegal location. BCSO says a disagreement led to someone firing and hitting two people. Sheriff Javier Salazar said at the scene last weekend her death was caught on camera. While that's devastating to the family, they know it means people saw what happened. So they're begging them to come forward and help this case. I mean, even if it's anonymous, mm -hmm. just come forward. Our daughter didn't deserve what happened to her. Investigators are asking that anyone who attended the event or knows anyone who has video taken from inside the party contact BCSO by calling 210 335 6000 or email BCSO tips at bear.org. They said you can remain anonymous. We are learning more about San Antonio Independent School District's decision to temporarily shutter its campuses during January's cold snap. Records obtained by KSAT Investigate show the district's boilers were not set to run around the clock. Many of its schools also experienced gas supply problems. District leadership was slammed for what parents and SAISD staff have described as a lack of preparation for the cold weather. It's very clear that there was significant mismanagement up to that point. Coming up at 6 o'clock this evening, we're going to show you just how cold some SAISD schools got, as well as the heavy criticism directed at Superintendent Dr. Jaime Aquino. The new Braunfels Police Department added a new vehicle to its fleet to keep the community safe when emergencies and disasters occur. City officials and police officers gathered this morning at the new Braunfels Police Department headquarters to celebrate this new addition. The new negotiations and tactical command vehicle costs about $700,000. It features different technology and cameras. The vehicle will be operated as a command hub for different situations. We have dozens of events throughout the years, or throughout the year, Worst Fest, Wine and Singer Fest, Wassel Fest, just to name a few. Uh, so we're very busy throughout the year with that. Plus, we do have the unexpected events that do come up uh, where there may be some type of hotches or negotiation situation or where SWAT is involved. And this will really give us the tools to, to be at that scene, take command of the scene. The vehicle includes perimeter cameras, an observation area at the top of the vehicle, and spaces where officers can work from. The Spurs are coming off a huge win in Austin last night. Hey, they're now four and six over their last 10. Highlights on the way. And you may notice some major road closures in San Antonio today. A look at the trouble spots still ahead. Welcome back. A big donation today going to San Antonio Threads. The seven-figure gift courtesy of philanthropist Kim Rapier. The million dollar donation will help those in need get new clothes, shoes, accessories, backpacks, hygiene items. While those items may be practical, the organization says this donation will have a wide impact. It means us to be able to continue serving our youth at a moment's notice, students, foster youth, youth that are aged out, homeless youth, um, youth that have been trafficked. Um, it just enables us to be able to continue our work of keeping our kids in school, helping them get jobs, providing dignity, comfort, confidence. If you or you know someone who is interested in referring a youth in need to San Antonio Threads, you can find a form on SanAntonioThreads.org. That's amazing. Now, downtown San Antonio will be a little more tricky to navigate. There is a couple of big road closures that start today. RJ Marquez with a look at the areas you need to avoid. 
Well, we have a couple of big projects starting in downtown San Antonio that are going to be running through the entire spring and even to the early part of this summer. So let's start here near Hemisphere because we have a big change here for South Alamo traffic. South Alamo traffic will now be directed to just southbound traffic on South Alamo in front of Hemisphere and in front of the convention center. So you will not be able to go northbound on South Alamo. What you will have to do is traffic will be detoured on Cesar Chavez all the way up to South Teresa Street or also up to St. Mary Street to Navarro Street to get back onto Market Street and then cut back down on South Alamo. So that's the first one that we're keeping an eye on. The other big sort of downtown project that we need to let you know about is that Santa Rosa Street will be shut down all the way from Cesar Chavez to Dolorosa Street. So basically, if you're coming on Cesar Chavez and you want to get onto Santa Rosa Street, you're not going to be able to. This will be in both directions. You have to come around here, go up Urban Loop all the way to San Saba Street and then come all the way back around on Dolorosa and then you can get on the two-way traffic by South Florida Street. So again, this project going to be taking place here for the next couple of months. Same situation there with uh, the South Alamo one-way traffic project as well as they continue all that construction in the downtown area. We have more information on both of these changes on KSAT.com. Have a good one, everybody. At least a lot of spring breaks are over with. Don't have to deal with that downtown. So, But if they're there. still in town, it was very windy for them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a little chilly for those who do have uh, spring break this week, which I think there's a few uh, places in Texas that uh, may be headed to San Antonio for spring break. It's a little, it's a little chilly. Uh, it does warm up as we get later into the week. The aquifer is uh, up a tenth of a foot today to 640.8 in your pollen count. Molds and oak, still the big problem. Uh, both of those are high. Hackberry and mulberry are low. Do we have more rain in our forecast? There is a chance. Uh, we'll take a look coming up. So it's time for our post spring break question of the day with Mike and Fiona. <laughs> kind of made you feel uncomfortable, didn't it? How about an awkward <laughs> moment? That was intentional. Did you guys all of a sudden go, what? He, uh, Is it, that why you call me Fiona? Okay. Well, especially because I called her I know. Fiona, so yeah, that was, that was really awkward. Oh, and, that, and, that's, and that's one of the responses we have out there. So. What's your what's your worst Was awkward moment besides Wait a minute. <laughs> calling Jen by the wrong name? Yeah, well, I can't well, get much worse than that, can I? So yeah, far, you're batting a hundred yeah, right now, right. batting a thousand, I should say. So, oh, uh, yeah, okay, well there you go. When someone calls you the wrong name, well, it's okay, dude. Accidentally, no, I love Fiona. It's okay. A work call with "I love you." That's hilarious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Unless it's your boss and you really want to get a raise or something. <laughs> uh, sending personal email to a coworker. But Bumping into someone you've canceled plans with. That's funny. Or returning a wave meant for someone else. Who's done that? Oh, I've done that. Yeah. The other day, yeah. 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 Somebody's going, hey, you go, I, do I know yeah, that? Yeah. I think I know. That. Oh, wait, they're yeah. behind yet. So, David, if you send me an email with the wrong name, I'm going to. Yeah. Well, I even, I mean, they even told me it was Jen, and I still said, yeah, I just said, <laughs> okay. Ooh, what a way to start the week. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that, David. All right. Hey, Jen, we've got cupcakes just to let you know. How long are you there, Jen? Uh, I'll be tomorrow. here. Yeah, tomorrow I'm live somewhere. I'll be here. Ba I'll be oh. back on Friday, though. Okay, so I'm going to practice worry. tonight. You're going to be you there ready, tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> so, I don't get oh, it. Oh, David. <laughs> All right, Justin. I got that right. You weren't even here last week. I thought, I that, was part, I thought that was part of the whole I thing. I thought yeah, so, that too. Was, wow. That was part of the gag. Yeah, that was it. No, you know what's awkward is when uh, you mean to like text your wife and then uh, you accidentally like text someone else and Ooh. then they're like, who are you talking to? Um, yeah. yeah. yeah anyway. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Not like that. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, anyway. <laughs> what are you saying, Justin? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, radar. We've got some showers that are coming through. And you can see we've got uh, light showers chalking off to the north and east. Nothing that's heavy, but uh, you may see a few sprinkles here and there. And, uh, you know, maybe a few rumbles of thunder out west. We've seen a little bit of that, but we don't expect much today. Uh, most of what we're going to go and see here around San Antonio, if we see anything at all, it's just going to be really, really light. But these showers continue uh, to work their way through. We still got an upper level low off to the west that's helping to create some of this activity. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here to San Antonio, and I'll switch the, uh, the radar sites here. And uh, you'll see that uh, everything we're seeing is generally, again, light. Uh, just hasn't really amounted to much, but we have had a few reports of sprinkles out there. Let me show you the time lapse 
We started off the morning with some sun, but then the clouds quickly came in and we've been stuck with mostly cloudy skies throughout much of the morning and now into the early afternoon. Right now at the airport, 62. Dew point is at 36. East northeasterly winds at about 14. Those winds have been a little bit gusty from time to time. Uh, these winds will be with us most of the day before they die down a little bit this evening. 65 at 4 o'clock, 66 at 5 p.m. And by the way, we will keep in small chance of showers early afternoon. Uh, as we head into tonight, temperatures in the 50s, eventually down into the 40s by tomorrow morning. So a chilly start. Uh, as we go into Tuesday, satellite picture shows all those clouds that have been surging in from the south and west and bigger picture shows those uh, light rain showers, heavier stuff down here at uh, deep south Texas. But uh, this this rain is all out ahead of an upper level low, which has been sitting out across the Four Corners region for what feels like forever. It's finally going to move. Uh, it will finally move east as we head into Wednesday and Thursday, and it actually does give us some rain chances. Tomorrow, I think it's just cloudy and cool. Um, it will be well above average again tomorrow. And then as we get into Wednesday, as the slow moves a little closer to Texas, then you start seeing some light showers developing. And I think we could even see a few thunderstorms Thursday morning before this all moves out. Now, if you're hoping for some sun, we do get some Thursday afternoon. Drier air works in uh, behind this system. As sun pops out, it will be warmer. Friday will be a very nice day. Uh, but before that happens, there could be a few storms, as I mentioned, Thursday morning. And we've got to talk about the risk for some strong storms. Now, I think the risk in general is pretty low, uh, but it is there on a scale of 1 to 5, about a 1. Storm Prediction Center uh, has put this out here mainly for the Hill Country. Something we'll watch as we get into Wednesday night. Uh, the rest of the forecast, again, cool the next couple days. By the way, spring officially uh, we move officially into spring at 1006 tomorrow evening so this is our last full day of winter but it kind of feels like it 61 tomorrow 64 wednesday there's that 30 percent chance of rain and then with some clearing we get into the upper 70s on thursday back up into the 80s on friday and then some 70s coming up this weekend maybe another chance of rain early next week guys spring weather it's all yeah, there a lot of ups and downs all right thanks Justin. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Spurs get a big night from Victor Wimbanyama. And we talked to more athletes about the big high school All-Star Sunday coming up this week. Spurs wrapping up their two-night stay in Austin, hosting the Brooklyn Nets last night. Take to the first quarter. This is who they came to see was Victor Wimbanyama. He put on a show. He's ready to go to work early on the break. Nice. Jeremy Sohan hands it off to Wendy, who's trailing him. The dunk. And the foul. Three point play. The Nets playing some defense. Off the rebound. Cam Thomas is going to get the steal and takes it off for the basket. And he gets fouled. Nets up seven after one. We go to the second quarter. Wimbanyama going baseline. And then high off the glass. Look at that reverse. <laughs> Keldon Johnson made three straight threes late, including this one, and the foul, a four-point play. The Spurs cut the lead to one point, and the Nets were up 56-55 at halftime. Back and forth in the third, head to the fourth. Wimby drains a three, cut the lead down to four. Then it's the rookie again with a tip-in to cut it to two. Wimbanyama slam dunk down the lane. Got it. Spurs tied at 107. They go up by three. Dennis Schroeder makes the three. That's sent to overtime. So we go into the overtime. In OT, Nets go up, but the Spurs bounce back. Wimby with the alley oop slam. That's so sweet looking. The Spurs are up one. The Nets look like they went back and forth. Schroeder layup, but the goaltend was called. However, little timeout. Check that. Reverse the call. It was not a goaltend. Once again, Johnson adds the bucket to put San Antonio up by three. <coughs> Excuse me. Spurs hang on to win it. There is your final 122 to 115 in overtime. After the game, Victor talked about the big block. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty sure I had it, and I just, I just asked the ref what he thought. Just casually, I asked what he thought was, uh, you know, was wrong. He said backboard first, but I knew it was going to be good. You know, our, our guys never quit. We will have games where we turn it over too much, or we don't shoot well, and might even get our butts kicked, but. Uh, even in those games, you know, they come back and do everything they can. And so, you know, they went down by 11 tonight and came back and did what they did. So I'm proud of them, happy for them. 
All right, so after two in Austin, they come back to the Frost Bank Center. They've got the Dallas Mavericks coming up tomorrow night. Then Memphis comes to town on Friday, and then Phoenix will be here on Saturday. We are less than a week away from the high school basketball all-star game. Great showcase for all-star basketball players from San Antonio and South Texas. Happening at the Northside Sports Gym, 120 seniors from both boys and girls teams will be putting on their talents to display in their final high school basketball contest of their high school career. We're going to hear from four players from both high school and one from Nixon Smiley High School who will be here. Uh, it feels great to know that uh, I'm going to be competing with some of the top people in, uh, in San Antonio area. It feels cool to be doing it with my friends and a lot of people I grew up with. And then to be here with a teammate of yours, how special is that? It's cool. We played the game our whole lives together, so it's cool to play one final game together. It's an awesome experience, and I'm also blessed that I was able to participate in it. And what does this honor mean to your family? It means everything. I worked. They have helped me since I was little, and it's awesome just to finally close it out like this. I'm honored to like have this accomplishment forever. And uh, usually it's uh, the football players who get all up, and now we're showing Yes. Them. How cool is that? That's incredible. I think that we deserve it. It feels great. I mean, but to be here and to be playing in the game soon, I'm happy and just feel blessed. So I, I'm going to go out there, show my thing, do my thing, and everybody else out there, just do their thing, and we're just going to show what we got. All right, once again, great thing that it's boys and girls, and it's all over South Texas, not just here in San Antonio. So it's going to be a lot of fun. The inaugural All-Star Game Skills Challenge three-point contest, four games, eight teams featuring top players from Class 6A all the way down to private schools. You can see all the action next Sunday live right here on KSAT 12 starting at noon. Make sure to check out the All-Star Basketball page on KSAT.com if you want some more information. And speaking of basketball, March Madness. That's going to be a little bit of March Madness there for you next Sunday. But also, here's a look at some of the Texas schools and their matchups in the first round of the NCAA Tournament. Texas is taking on either Colorado State or Virginia. Those two play, and then the winner will play Texas. And then Texas Tech is taking on North Carolina State, Baylor, We'll battle Colgate, Baylor a three seed, and then Texas A&M is a ninth seed, getting to take on eight seed Nebraska. The women are in the same boat. The Texas A&M women are playing Nebraska in their matchups. Houston got the number one seed. They deserved it. They play, take, take on the 16th seed Longwood, and the ninth seed TCU Horned Frogs take on Utah State. So this is the time for March Madness, and it all starts tomorrow night with the play-in game. So. And I know we're going to have lots of coverage on that. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> now, coming up, a birth control pill is now even easier to get. A look at the increased access still ahead. Once again, outside with live cams and clouds, maybe a peak of sun here and there, some humidity, maybe a little bit of rain here and there. Did I cover it? <laughs> I think that about covers okay. it, David. I think you nailed it. I'm just trying. Uh, that's that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, and it's going to be a cool day, too, because you have all those clouds in place. We're just not going to see temperatures warm up that much. It doesn't feel a lot like spring, which officially starts tomorrow, by the way. But we do see it, especially on the roadsides. Uh, take a look at this picture out of Marble Falls. Uh, those are the blue bonnets, and they look great. I can confirm traveling yesterday. Uh, there are some great spots with the blue bonnets that are really thick right now. It looks really nice. This is from Pink Ninja out there in Marble Falls. Uh, beautiful shot. We appreciate it as always. Uh, let's look at the radar real quickly. And we do have uh, some very light showers that continue to try to make their way towards San Antonio, although we have not seen much in the way of rainfall. It's mainly just been some light sprinkles. I think that's probably the trend uh, that we'll see throughout the rest of the afternoon. We'll see less and less of this on the radar. But a few showers here and there, especially south and west of San Antonio, a possibility. Today's highs, 65 here in town, 63 at Fairhawks Ranch, 66 in Bandera, nothing uh, too terribly warm. Again, because of the cloud cover, that's going to keep temperatures uh, really in check. And it gets even cooler tomorrow. We start off in the 40s, and we'll struggle to get to 60 degrees tomorrow. We're going to talk more about that forecast, and we'll have a look across the country as well, coming up in just a couple minutes. A business owner who police accuse of selling cemetery headstones to families and never delivering them, taken away in handcuffs, Elena Moreno, claimed her innocence as she walked past our cameras on Saturday. KSAT aired several stories within the last month with a total of 12 families who say they paid Moreno up front and are still waiting. After those stories aired, 
Many families took their reports to SAPD. On Saturday, police arrested Moreno for one of those cases where the family of Isaiah Velasquez paid over $8,500. Theft of that amount is a state jail felony. Police are still investigating the other reports and charges could possibly be added. Moreno's bond was set at $5,000 and she was released from jail today. The state's controversial immigration law, SB4, is set to go into effect today unless the nation's highest court makes a ruling. Last week, the U.S. Supreme Court extended the pause on a law that would allow law enforcement to arrest migrants just on their immigration status. The law was put on hold so the court could make a ruling. If no ruling is made, the law is set to go into effect at 4 o'clock this evening. Starting this month, the U.S. government is now requiring migrants without passports to use facial recognition technology to board flights across the U.S. The TSA has not said when the rule will go into effect, but some migrants at a South Texas airport are saying they were turned away this week. The TSA says this new method is using Department of Homeland Security records, but it's not clear how migrants with foreign passports will be affected. Now to Russian President Vladimir Putin. He declared victory in a sham election with no serious challengers facing him. But as ABC's Tom Fusi Bridge reports, Russians around the country protested, inspired by the late opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Vladimir Putin reaffirming his iron grip on power in a stage-managed election. Putin claiming his highest ever victory, a whopping 87% of the vote. The only other candidates were Kremlin approved. Virtually all opposition leaders are in exile, jailed or dead. And for the first time ever, Putin uttering the name of his longtime political rival, Alexei Navalny, who died in a Russian penal colony last month. Putin claiming in his victory speech he agreed to release Navalny just days before he died. <laughs> Navalny's wife, Yulia, voting in Berlin. <laughs> while other Russian exiles there chant Russia against Putin. And thousands inside Russia heeding a call to converge on polling stations in protest Sunday midday, with queues forming in major Russian cities. <laughs> One polling booth set ablaze in early voting Friday. But dissent in Putin's Russia, an increasingly dangerous game. The authorities clamping down, banning any candidate campaigning against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In Russian-occupied parts of Ukraine, ballot boxes taken to people's homes under armed guard, according to Ukrainian officials. The U.S. calling the vote there blatant propaganda. Well, amid aggressive pro-Kremlin propaganda, Vladimir Putin does enjoy widespread popular support. But 87 percent of the vote is simply implausible in any democratic election. With the war in Ukraine dragging on, it's hard to say how solid Putin's regime really is. Tom Sufi Burridge, ABC News, London. Back here at home, lawmakers scrambling to avoid a partial shutdown ahead of a federal government funding deadline that is just days away. Congress spent months averting shutdowns at the 11th hour with stopgap bills. It finally passed package of six bills in early March to fund a slate of government agencies for the rest of the fiscal year. But a number of key government operations still need to be funded by the end of the day, Friday. They include the Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Labor, Health and Human Services, Education, State and the Legislative Branch. Homeland Security has proven to be a particularly thorny issue in the funding fight amid partisan disagreements over border policy. YouTube will now require content creators to label videos that were made using artificial intelligence. It's part of the company's efforts to be more transparent about content that could confuse or mislead users. Now creators will see a checklist when they upload content that appears realistic. It will ask if the video makes a person say or do something they didn't do, alters footage of a real place or event, or depicts a scene that didn't actually occur. YouTube said creators could face consequences if they repeatedly fail to add the disclosure. Today, online sales began for the first over-the-counter birth control pill approved in the U.S. Opil can be bought directly from its own website, opil.com and Amazon. Some major retail pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens have said they will offer Opil once they receive their shipments. CVS said it expects to have available later this month. Manufacturer Perego has a suggested retail price of $20 for a one-month supply, $50 for a three-month supply. The company says when taken as directed, Opil is 98% effective at preventing pregnancy. 
That's in line with the effectiveness of most birth control pills. It's a cancer of the plasma cells and it can be accompanied by several other ailments. However, medical advancements are giving people new hope when it comes to beating myeloma. It's a cancer that disproportionately affects African-Americans. Myeloma, also called multiple myeloma, is more than twice as common among black people as among white people, and men are more likely to develop it, according to the CDC. There's no cure for the disease, but in honor of Multiple Myeloma Awareness Month, Mandy Gaither explains how significant advances in therapies are helping patients live longer. It's a cancer of the plasma cells, which are antibody creating white blood cells that protect against infection. Myeloma often strikes those over the age of 45. And there's over 30,000 people each year in the United States alone that are diagnosed uh, with this particular condition. Hematologist Rafael Fonseca with Mayo Clinic says patients with myeloma may experience kidney failure, bone destruction and pain and anemia. But in his years of training and treatment of myeloma, he's seen a shift in survival rates. Over 25 years ago, patients had an average life expectancy of about two years. Nowadays, many patients can expect to live 10, 15, and even sometimes 20 years after their diagnosis. Fonseca says that's due to advances in treatment of the disease, including medications and immunotherapy. We have uh, antibodies that directly bind to the myeloma cells and kill them. So that's uh, very effective. We, we have a number of them. Fonseca says there are also new therapies like CAR-T, a cell therapy where a patient's T cells, a type of white blood cell, are taken and retrained through genetic engineering. They can be given back to the person, but now they have a target, and that target is myeloma cells. And some of the treatments are highly, highly effective. In particular, the CAR T cells, we see that in some clinical trials, more than 90% of patients can have very deep responses. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Okay. The doctor says a research continues with more advances available in treatments. He's hopeful that myeloma will become a curable disease. And a look outside with live camp, 63 degrees, cloudy afternoon. Hotty and cool, 63 so far today, the low this morning, 56. This is below average, as we said earlier. The average is mid-70s this time of year. Uh, so this is well below average. The record is 95, just to give you some perspective, set back in 2013. But we can go as low as 23. Look at that, 1892. We can still get freezing temperatures this time of year, although there is no, none of those uh, in the forecast. We actually have a warm-up headed our way. We'll take a look. Come on. Welcome back. I know a lot of people like this cool weather today. Nice change. Well, it's still March. It should still be cool. We're not ready for that change. Although, what is it today or tomorrow? That's spring, tomorrow. Spring is here. Tomorrow night. Yeah, spring. I, I tomorrow don't know. night. I don't is know, like... Tiffany. I don't know if I don't know if I like this. No. It's kind of chilly. Oh, oh no. Here we bit. go. We'll be turning up the heat before well, it's all over. Uh, you're right, though, because Man. we know what's ahead. So yes, I, I, I'm okay with it. Uh, it feels all right. 65 degrees is what we're forecasting this afternoon. Uh, 50s and 60s across the state. I mean, in general, this is a cool day for the state of Texas. And you see some of that blue off to the north and east. That's some really cold air that's plunging south. There are now freeze warnings for parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, as that cold air is plunging south. Now, we're feeling some of it here, yes, but it's going to be even colder across the southeast where they could get down below freezing, including Atlanta, Memphis, uh, Jackson, Mississippi tonight. We'll see temperatures in the 40s, but not a freeze here. I think there could be a few spots in the whole country that get down into the 30s, but uh, it's certainly not that cold. 65 by 3 o'clock, 65 at 4 o'clock. We'll keep in a small chance of showers, by the way, uh, for the first half or first half of the afternoon, probably, and then rain chances start to taper off. Uh, by 8 o'clock, 60 degrees, mostly cloudy, and then mostly cloudy overnight. Temperatures down to 51 at 1 a.m. and eventually again down into the 40s. Right now, still pretty chilly out there. We've got temperatures in the low 60s for San Antonio, New Braunfels. 59 right now in Bernie. We still haven't even got above 60 there. And we've had a pretty good east-northeasterly wind as that cooler air has pushed in 
And look at the uh, wind in Seguin, northeast at 23 and gusty. Uh, we've seen some gusts close to 25, even 30 miles per hour in some cases this morning. The authority radar shows these light showers again trying to work their way towards San Antonio. Uh, we've seen a few light showers here within the last uh, hour and now they're trying to push a little bit closer to town. Uh, let me switch radar sites once again and get a little better look at some of this uh, shower activity. It really, it's light. Uh, but you could see a few sprinkles here moving into the city of San Antonio within the next 30 minutes or so. So heads up there. Uh, the water vapor imagery, well, you see the swirl in the atmosphere, right, uh, over California and Arizona. That's the big upper level O that's been spinning out there. This finally, finally gets a push out to the east uh, because it's what's br been bringing us our unsettled weather. And as it pushes east, a uh, few showers today. I think it's quiet tomorrow. It's just cloud cover, but cool. And then as we get into Wednesday, Wednesday night, we'll start to see some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms redeveloping. And we'll see that through about Thursday morning before that pushes east. Uh, and there is a threat that we could see a couple strong storms during this time frame. Now, I don't think the atmosphere is, uh, you know, just perfect for severe weather, but I think that there could be a little bit of uh, activity that bubbles up into something maybe uh, on the strong side. Something to watch. Thursday morning, and then I think Thursday afternoon along the coast, there could be a few strong storms. But by Thursday afternoon here in San Antonio, the skies will be clearing and we'll see some warmer weather. Uh, by the way, we're 21 days away from the total solar eclipse. Here's uh, today's fact. Get your glasses now. They will go fast. You want to make sure they're the approved glasses. And we will be doing some KSAC glasses giveaway, so you'll want to stay tuned for that uh, if you don't have your glasses yet. But uh, now's the time to start preparing for the big eclipse that happens on April 8th. 61 tomorrow. Yes, we do officially go into spring 10.06 p.m. 64 Wednesday, 30% chance of rain Wednesday night into Thursday. And then warmer weather by Friday and into the weekend. We'll be right back. More accolades for Usher, the latest at the 55th NAACP Image Awards. A month after his Super Bowl halftime performance, Usher took home the honors for Outstanding Male Artist and the top prize, Entertainer of the Year. Other winners were Taraji P. Henson for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture, Fantasia Barino for Best Actress in a Motion Picture. The Outstanding Motion Picture Award went to the color purple. At this weekend's box office, Kung Fu Panda 4 stayed on top. The Jack Black voiced cartoon made $30 million, just enough to edge out Dune Part 2, while Arthur the King was a distant third, taking in $7.5 million. The Kung Fu Panda franchise now approaching $2 billion in total box office since it launched in 2008. And blowing out the birthday candles today, Queen Latifah, the actress, singer, and rapper, is 54. Brian Clark, ABC News, New York. David, I saw you dancing. <laughs> a little usher, you know. <laughs> just a little bit. All right. Now we're just minutes away from SA Live at Historic Market Square. Mike yep. and Jen. Jen. Look, it's Jen. She's standing right there. It is right Jen. You got it, David. It is Jen. Thank you very much. So y'all are ready <laughs> yes. to spring right. into spring, are you? We have got, uh, what'd you say? I said you're ready to spring into spring. Oh, yes. Yes. We are. We're also ready to bite into some good mm -hmm. baked goods, too. Go. Yes, yes, indeed. Because like we have a champ on the show. Yes. The Lila Smethers is joining us today. Okay, and this is the winning cake right here. What is in it? Yes. Okay, so it is a chocolate cake with caramel inside Ooh. and Nutella pastry cream Ooh. and salted caramel buttercream and a chocolate whale tail on top with sugar flames on and top. And if that's not enough, a secret ingredient inside yeah. in the actual cake mix itself is it makes it delicious. Yes, I have sampled so. Yes, I do. <laughs> Speaking of delicious, Oh, these yes. tacos. Tacos, tacos. We have Cynthia Perez joining us, and she is sharing some of the delicious food. By the way, Wendy tried some of those tacos. I'm so excited to hear about that. Our dear friend Elsa Fernandez is here, and of course, a lot of people were just on vacation, but if you're getting ready to go on vacation, she has got some great tips. What are you doing with straws and that thing? We're going to get everybody ready, packing for their spring vacations. Salad dressing holder and straws can help you pack. Hey, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Yes, I'm intrigued. Okay. Yes, thank you, Elsa. Also, we, we take you Texas tripping to the Hill Country, Oro Bianco Italian 
Creamery. It's a milk you can't find at any grocery stores. We're going to share the backstory there. This is going to be interesting. Also, how about those awkward moments? Like when a certain news anchor calls a certain host by the wrong name. Okay, returning the wave you meant for that. Scan the QR code. Look what's in the lead right now. We've all done that one. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. Awkward. Thank you.